I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm back. Oh, yeah. I just wanna get it oh, yeah. in this life, I'm crazy. Got I'm the camera on and everything. Don't care. Only got one, so you better go. I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna take that, stay back, I'll be swinging Get down him, till it hits, come in all caps. I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me, I be like that. I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact, give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back. I'm sick of being cautious, I'ma go cause something, can't stop this. I'ma steal everybody's lane, call the shoplift, sick of hearing everyone complain when they thought this. There Got a now. dock full of seals. Okay, so the bar's not looking too good. Yeah. Might not be might not be too efficient today. We got Captain Jeff. Co pilot. Wait, actually padding, who's captain? Well you're captain, but who's co pilot? Chapman. It's gotta be Jeff, yeah. You know? Jeff. Yep. You're fucking near I am. <laughs> cool. All right, we're heading out to do something. Check pots. Holy cow, yeah, that guy probably lives down here. Got some cool boats out here. Yeah, it's a ton of firewood. It's wild. Parking any fish. I wonder what those guys are doing off the bridge. Are they fishing the sandwich? I don't know. We were wondering the same thing. They were, uh, they were there they yesterday. Were yeah. I have no idea what they're doing. Like the idiots I work with, they have to unloosen bolts. You mean tighten? No, unloosen. That's tightening. Oh, yeah. no, that's definitely a male. Oh, yeah. Nice. Here, are you a camera boy now? Oh, are you well, recording this? Oh, yeah. I'll, uh, I don't see the screen. It's not on. That's fatty. You don't even need to measure him. And he's nice and firm. Girls? Uh, they're male, but they're too measured. small. That's too small. Yeah. Too small. Yeah. Too small. Not this guy. Too small. Too small. Here, let me get in there. Let me bait. Love boy. Bait man. Ah! <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Alright, we're using chicken today. Chicken! It's chicken titty. Or no, that's a thigh. Chicken butt. Looking good. That doesn't look good. That looks nasty. Nice. How long has it been sitting in the sun? That's the shit that they had at the freezer, in the freezer at the hoarder's house. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hoarder house chicken. Yeah, clean up the freezer, I'm like, hey, save that chicken. She's like, what? Probably like 12 <laughs> years <laughs> old. <laughs> Gross. Don't drip that in your beer, Jeff. Oh. oh. You might have to run back to the marina. Damn crab in ours. Every fucking time. Nice. It's the red. They don't like the red pots. Oh, there's some keepers in that yeah, one. Yeah, that's a big one there. 
It's a male, right? Yep. yep. Oh, some dandies. Roll in, boys. Enjoy your time. Fill that with water. <laughs> <laughs> you fill oh my god. Negative. Not too shabby. Uh, measure. Yeah. That one's close. Gotta be legal. And boom. Legal. legal. Love it. Oh, Alright. Gonna bait this one up with some. 12 year old hoarder house chicken. Yum. Oh, yeah. Captain. Captain Patrick. Alright, we'll be back here with you. Well, we got more. The 12 year old hoarder house chicken. We don't even have a cooker to cook them at the house. Did you bring a pot? I didn't see that. Bunch of littles, but a lot better numbers. Lots One keeper. Lots of ladies. So you got chicken in there and add yeah. the fish? Yeah, the chicken worked good. Chicken pots again. Tons of boats out here today. And one crazy guy on a paddleboard over there. Probably can't see him. But. Busy day, everybody's waiting for the ocean to calm down. You know, bait drop or... Ain't happening, I don't think. Looking rough. We'll get across the bar. Finally opened up the bar, we're heading out. Almost 11 o'clock. Actually, probably after 11 o'clock by now. Time check. 11.25. Everybody's heading out. cooking I guess I don't even have to gaff it you got it look at that not too shabby got a couple in the boat just in the last five minutes <laughs> Whoa! Huh. what happened oh I thought it was hot oh. all of a sudden nice I'll bleed them out for you Jeff one more and then you got the pulse My goodness, Patrick, this knife needs some help. Ooh, got a bleeder. Finally got some fish blood in the boat. Looking good. Tell you what, these electric reels are the way to go. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop in here and give you a recap of the um, fishing trip. Um, it started out as a tuna trip um we we're supposed to go out saturday saturday didn't work out ocean conditions weren't good um so we planned for sunday but lo and behold sunday the bar was nasty again so we couldn't get out sunday so we tinkered around in the bay with crab pots and whatnot waiting to get out um finally got out of the bar at about 11 30. um we weren't out too far uh, maybe six six seven miles something like that um, just uh, southwest of the Umqua bar um, and uh, we were long lining for bottom fish um, it, we weren't having much luck at all for quite a while but um, finally got into some fish around two o'clock we had we got four fish in the boat um, and then we were gonna circle back and hit that hole again and um took off to circle back and i looked over to my stepdad and i was like why does the motor look like it's almost underwater and uh for the previous two or so hours before that 
um, he had the motor in reverse and was kind of reversing us into the waves a little bit to keep us in this one spot and the uh, swim deck here on the back of the boat typically is completely out of the water um, which is ideal because um, around this weather stripping on the where the swim deck uh, comes together um, there's a gap in it and water leaks well the uh, auto bilge pump the little toilet float that's down there that kicks on the bilge pump it did not kick on um, and when we realized what was going on um, this is the back of the or the compartment fuel tank um, the water was right here just below the batteries I'm going to measure it for you guys um, and tell you exactly how much was in here um, but I'm guessing about three feet uh, and underneath in the cabin you can still see it's pretty wet down here um, the, the carpet's still soaked down here there's a little bit of water here still um, it's always been kind of wet down here but usually farther back but this is wet all the way up up underneath um, this center cushion pops out um, but I don't know if you guys can see that the water was all the way up to here three inches up that yeah um, pretty scary to say the least um, we had four guys on the boat um, two guys went up to the front um, we boom, shot off a flare um, I would say within five minutes of my stepdad calling over the radio telling him trying to get a hold of the Coast Guard which kind of took us a second to get them on the radio but several charter boats showed up within five minutes um, and they were right next to us willing to help with anything we needed um, and they stayed with us until the Coast Guard showed up but um, yeah fishing wasn't great and kind of a crappy end to a uh, what was going to be an awesome tuna fishing trip but um yeah kind of a scary experience but um i wanted to uh let you guys know why the video just ended abruptly um without a recap so that's pretty much the scoop um yeah not uh not ideal uh for sure pretty scary experience because um when we took off um uh, Obviously the motor was all the way down, but um, my stepdad tried to take off and when I noticed it, the water, when he tried to take off, the water was right underneath the four stroke logo on the, on the motor. And I was like, wow, that doesn't look right. And then when I came back here, this, um, this aluminum bracket that holds the kicker was completely submerged underwater, which means that there was water coming in where the controls go through um so the uh yeah the auto in the auto uh bilge float wasn't working but the he manually turned it on and it started pumping water out but by that point there was a ton of debris caught around the bilge pump so i had to pop this hatch open and crawl in there and every few minutes um just get down in there and move debris and stuff away from the bilge pump so it can pump water but um i would say within it was less than 15 minutes and the coast guard was was there right next to us um and they they followed us all the way in but we we're able it took an hour for the bilge pump to get all the water out um and uh yeah so kind of a crazy crazy experience but um i just wanted to give you guys a little recap um uh, we did pretty good on crabs so uh I think we might rename the boat deadliest catch um but uh yeah kind of crazy so now we got um boat maintenance to do so this is my stepdad's boat he's had it for quite a long time now um and this is the that was the first trip out in three years so that's kind of crappy um but just a good uh wake up call to make sure you got your stuff in order before you go out especially we were planning on going 30 miles out for tuna so um yeah definitely uh a good learning experience so not uh 
not ideal in any circumstance, but I really, really thankful uh, to the boats that showed up to help. Um, we didn't, thank God, end up needing them. Um, we were able to realize what was going on and get the bilge pump kicked on and, and just slowly crawl back like six miles an hour. Um, and then after about, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, just crawling along at six miles an hour, we had pumped enough water out to get up kind of on plane 20, 25, um, and then made it all the way back to the marina, um, went straight to the Coast Guard dock and they had a trash pump there waiting. Um, but we, by the time we got all the way back, it was pretty much dry, so we didn't end up using it. But um, yeah, just a crazy experience. Um, so just wanted to let you guys know how that fishing trip ended um i didn't get any of that on video um definitely was not thinking about that at the time just more concerned about keeping this boat above the water <laughs> um so yeah definitely not uh not out trying to sink boats for views we were trying to catch tuna um but we got some crab and four sea bass so that's all we ended up with but I'm gonna set you guys up here and I'm gonna measure this and see, cause I'm, I'm curious. We were dipping it um, with the gaff just to, just to get a, uh, to see where we were at. Um, we made some marks on the gaff. Uh, so right there, that cut line I think was the first, first measurement. So we were thinking two feet, but I don't know if that is exactly where the bottom of the boat is. So I'm gonna actually measure it, so. All right, guys. I got the gaff laying across, um, right at the right below the battery, the two batteries. Which is when I pulled this storage hatch out here in the back. Um, initially, that was where, right where the water was, um, and I'm seeing 28 inches there. Um, obviously, that's just a a rough estimate, but it seems about right because. It wasn't coming out of this hatch um, onto the floor of the boat yet, but pretty darn close. Um, yeah, still way too close uh, for comfort. So I um, just wanted to give an accurate measurement of that. Um, and like I said, it was all, you know, that down here in the floor underneath um, in the cabin, it was all the way up under there up the side about three to four inches um, so yeah pretty wild um, yeah I don't know, that's that's the spiel um, I'm gonna quit rambling but um, yeah crazy experience so definitely uh, replacing both bilge pumps um, doing a new uh, auto float um, kick on for both of them I think that way they both kick on um, and then sealing up whatever is leaking <laughs> uh, so def I'm just here uh, at my parents for family dinner we're gonna get the crab pots rinsed off get the electric reels cleaned up um, get those put away and uh, yeah the mother just get the boat cleaned up because we're probably done fishing for the year in this thing <laughs> I would imagine one uh, one trip in the last three years it sucks but yeah oh well so I'm just glad we got the boat back in one piece um, and I'm glad we didn't lose power in the main motor or else we really would have been in a world of trouble but yeah all right guys thanks a lot for watching we'll see you on the next one